Dr. Vinancasa has been providing quality dental care in a professional manner since 1986. Although his expertise is in cosmetic, restorative, and single visit restorative dentistry, he also provides general and family dentistry. Dr. Vinancosa earned his doctorate in dental surgery from the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio, Texas. Dr. Mark Vinancosa is here with us to discuss sleep dentistry. Welcome doctor. My first question to you is, what is sleep dentistry? Sleep dentistry is um, a way that dentists can help patients pursue dental work um, in a way where patients can be more comfortable. A large segment of our patient population, but some patients are so anxious or so concerned about going to the dental office that they just don't want to be very aware of what's going on. And we understand that. We have heard hundreds and hundreds of stories of patients who, when they were children, had a lot of dental work done without the advantage of local anesthetic. I don't really understand why that happened, but I guess that's the way dentistry was then. And so they experienced pain every time they went to the dentist. In other cases, maybe they did have a local anesthetic to help numb the teeth. But for one reason or another, the, it, it didn't work. Maybe the patient um, wasn't, maybe not enough time was allowed for the anesthetic to work. And the dentist started working before the tooth was numb. And this is no different than in the previous example I gave. The tooth's going to hurt. Um, and there's other cases where a patient maybe had a root canal done and it wasn't properly managed to where the local anesthetic is not going to work. When there's a large infection, even though the dentist attempts to get it numb, if they want to work on it that same day, a lot of times the anesthetic is not near going to be he is effective. And so they, these kind of painful experiences really affect patients for years and years. And as a result, it can cause them not to go to the dentist. And so the teeth problems begin and continue, and it can really be a huge problem for patients. And so, so we, we understand this. So we have ways that we can help patients with some certain medications to come in with someone else driving them to the office and bringing them home so that they can be less aware, more sleepy, um, and they can get their dental work done in their mind in a more comfortable way. And so this is one way that we can accomplish that. And so with that and with our nitrous oxide gas, patients can generally just rest or sleep while they're having the dental work done. And of course, we're, you know, making sure they're comfortable with our local anesthetics and giving them time to work to where we can create really nice experiences for them. And usually, to be honest with you, after two or three visits of doing it that way, the patient realizes that the medications made them groggy for hours after their appointment, or they realize that from what they remembered about the appointment, that it really wasn't that bad or that they don't want to inconvenience someone bringing them to the office or bringing them back home. And they'll start to decide, I think I want to go without the sleep dentistry medication and, and see how this goes. And a lot of times we convert patients to where they're no longer anxious anymore because they realize that it wasn't, it's not how it used to be. Sleep dentistry is a wonderful way for patients to get care. Uh, and it's also a way for patients to um, maybe realize also that it's, it's not like that here uh, and, and like I said it's a gateway to get them here to start getting their dental work done which is a win-win and then it uh, gets them to where they can behaviorally learn that dental appointments really aren't that bad and uh, it's it's really very helpful we're so happy to have it we understand that less than half the population sees a dentist regularly and the fear or previous experiences is the big reason why so that's why we offer the sleep dentistry. What type of sedation do you use? We um, use basically a special kind of a sleeping pill and patients will take it um, the night before. We do that so they can have maybe a better night's sleep because I know a lot of patients might be thinking about their appointment overnight and might not sleep very well. So they take this medication before they go to bed, we have them take it about 90 minutes before their appointment. 
and we ask them to bring one of those tablets as well during the appointment in case we need them to take another one while we're working. Uh, we also have available for patients if they want IV sedation. We don't see patients doing this very much with regular dental work. Certainly we do with the wisdom teeth and we always have that available for them on the wisdom teeth should they desire it. But for dental treatment, we can arrange to have a doctor come in to provide IV sedation as well while we're working. But like I said, most patients do very well with the special sleeping medication and the nitrous oxide gas. How does it actually work? The sleep medication, it's, it's like a sleep medicine, like I indicated. And so patients are sleepier. They're not necessarily out totally, but they just care as much. If time goes by faster, they're not as aware their uh, their ability to feel any discomfort um, or to feel much is diminished. And um, in their minds, it's just a little foggier. And so the anxiety isn't as apparent to them. Uh, it makes it to where they're more open to receiving um, dental care. And, uh, and uh, the object isn't to make them 100% asleep. You know, we want to do this totally safely. And so by just helping them to be less aware, by helping their, uh, their ability to feel things get more diminished, that usually is all we need to accomplish. Is anesthesia safe? Um, when we're talking about sleep dentistry, I would assume that you're talking about like IV sedation. And that anesthesia is safe when properly managed. Uh, just like when people go to the hospital or something like that, there's always risks. Um, there's certainly more risks with IV sedation than there are with taking the sleep medications. But when things are properly managed, we're very much minimizing those risks. So we don't want to do anything, of course, that presents risks that are unreasonable. Um, so when we ask, is it safe in the way that it's managed in our office, in the way that we select out our patients and provide uh, medical history questionnaires to them and, and ask them questions about that kind of thing, we're minimizing risk with each of those steps. And so when you ask, is the anesthesia safe? I would say it is, but I can't honestly say it's 100% safe, but we certainly do everything I can to leverage that risk to where we're really minimizing that. Who is an ideal candidate for sedation or anesthesia? The ideal candidate, I would say, is um, for like IV sedation would be someone that just doesn't want to have any recollection of the procedure, but at the same time, with IV sedation to help manage the risk, I can't guarantee that they won't perceive anything from the appointment. But when you ask who's the ideal patient, I would say it's someone who is really, really fearful and wants to as much as they can not recall anything that's happened during the appointment. But as I indicated, from what I've experienced in our practice, there's really not that many people like that. Um, and for those that are maybe being treated in a hospital is the best way so they can have deeper anesthesia, a deeper level of sedation, so they have all the monitoring equipment and more than what we can possibly provide in the office. And that's the way they can leverage that risk. Um, but like I said, for most patients with this, the sleeping pill and the nitrous oxide gas, for most all patients, that's all they need to where they don't need that anesthesia or IV sedation. Can I be sedated to have all of my treatment done at one time? It is possible to have your sedation and have all the treatment done at once. Uh, there are times like when uh, crowns or, or implants or something else like that that needs to be done. Everything can possibly done in this day and time to get it all done in one visit. But certainly, we can minimize how many visits are necessary. So, you know, to answer your question, a lot, if not everything, can be done in one visit. But there's some things that, based on technology now, we just can't finish everything in one visit. But to be honest with you, too, on that second visit or potentially third visit, there might not be a need for this anesthesia or IV sedation because the appointments are a lot easier. 
Uh, there's much less that needs to be experienced. And so um, patients might might have had everything they needed done with the anesthesia and they wouldn't need it anymore uh, for those later appointments. What will be the feeling after treatment? After whether it's a sleep medication or IV sedation, patients are gonna be groggy. Um, in some cases, they're not gonna remember some of what happened. They might not remember leaving the office. They might not remember some of the procedure. They might not remember getting home. So I, I would say it's just like, if, if a patient's ever had a procedure in a hospital, you know, whether it be uh, the laser eye surgery or colonoscopy, they get home and they're kind of groggy. And it's the same way with the sleep medications, same way with IV sedation. Uh, there's no way that we can realistically expect a patient to feel like nothing happened afterwards. So, you know, if I was a patient getting the sleep medication or the IV sedation, just expect that you're going to need a few hours or more to get that fuzziness or grogginess out, uh, to get the sleepiness out. I would just recommend sleeping it off. So I, I know patients want something that's real efficient, effective, want to feel normal after the procedure's done. But I think realistically, we can be honest with ourselves and know that we're, we're going to have to expect a few hours or more before we feel like things are to any degree normal again.